to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Central Europe. I hope everybody is having a wonderful week so far, staying healthy, productive, optimistic, and studying lots in this class. We are looking at the reading section of the IELTS exam. Specifically, we are looking at an academic passage. But of course, the section three passage of general IELTS is very, very similar to an academic IELTS passage. So lots to learn and definitely useful for both uh, types of modules, both general and academic. This is a members chat class. Everybody is welcome to watch. To become a member, click the join button next to the subscribe button. This lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com. Academic health success. Uh, visit us there for the general IELTS. Check us out at gieltshelp.com. That's generaliltshelp.com. On both of our websites, we have lots and lots of materials to help you improve and master uh, your IELTS exam. Our websites look like this. This is our academic web portal at aehelp.com. All you need to do to join our premium package is click this big red button and you will uh, have access to all of our wonderful videos, interactive courses, practice exams. It is a one-time payment for lifetime access. We are an IELTS registration center and we are trained British Council agents. For the general IELTS, it's the green background. Again, just click that big red button. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. Hi, Rashika. Hi, Vishnu, Preeti, Nikhil. Welcome to the class. Good to have you on board. If anybody has questions, just send me uh, an email to adrian at aehelp.com and I will gladly answer your inquiries in due time. Right now, reading our next class in a, about 90 minutes, uh, we'll be listening parts one and two. That class, everybody will be able to join the chat, so um, members as well as non-members. Hi, Caroline, Nick Hill, good to see everyone. Okay, uh, so this is our reading passage for today, and uh, we'll get right into it. We'll talk strategy and I will explain to you exactly what you need to do to get that band uh, nine. So uh, here we have uh, the title, The Aesthetic Merit of Abstract Art. Now uh, we have a picture here, and to be perfectly honest with you, I did not have any pictures in my exam for the computer-based uh, version of the test. Uh, maybe they do exist, but I didn't have any uh, for the paper based I have seen black and white uh, images for uh, the titles so that can definitely help you if you have an image uh, for uh, your IELTS exam reading the title is extremely important now right away I think some students when they read this title they might get a little bit freaked out going oh what the abstract or aesthetic merit of abstract art uh, yeah, um, don't panic, okay? You can definitely read and understand even if the idea is new. So don't worry, don't panic, stay focused, okay? I had definitely had some really interesting topics in my IELTS exam the other week. Um, one of the topics was um, um, family, uh, it was the impact of uh, families on workers in Australia. Um, one of the other uh, topics was um, the art of deception. Okay, so we're definitely getting into this kind of uh, style of topic. The art of deception, that was a, uh, information based in psychology. And then uh, there was a, a third topic which was quite interesting as well. So definitely IELTS picks some fairly unique uh, concepts for uh, the reading passages and you will see that all the way in the academic and you will see it in section three of the general IELTS exam as well. Okay, so be ready for it uh, and be ready to interpret and understand information. So the first step, members, is what? What do you need to do? So you 
get to this part of your exam, the reading starts, whether you're doing computer-based or paper-based. Um, what do you need to do? Welcome, Prashita. Nice of you to join our group of members. Make sure to send me an email so I can hook you up with your exclusive videos and join in on the questions and answers. So the question right now is, what do you need to do when uh, you get to this part? Okay, Preeti says, uh, start visualizing. So start to see the information. Yeah, and start to predict the information from the title. Now, one really important tip um, at this point, don't worry about understanding too much. Okay, so if, uh, if the information appears a bit confusing or a little bit hazy, unclear at the start, that's totally okay, right? The more you read, the more you use your mind, the clearer everything will become. So I think it's really scary in the IELTS when you get to the reading passage and it seems like everything's a mystery. But it is really important to stay calm and focus on strategy. So keep this tip in mind, everyone, when you go to your IELTS exam. It's very, very important, okay? So when you begin the reading section, it is really absolutely normal. So it's completely normal that uh, at first glance, the information appears confusing, unfamiliar, and incomprehensible. Okay? Uh, don't panic. All right? Uh, stay calm and focus on strategy. Okay, the information will become much clearer as you read. Okay, however, definitely don't. Um, I think one really bad situation that happens to uh, many students is they panic at this point and then they just start um, falling back to their old ways and skimming and scanning and going, okay, I'm just going to try to search and skim and scan for answers. So um, don't do that, okay? Uh, do not panic and just start skim reading for answers as this is a sure way to get a lower band score in the reading section. Okay. Um, I was uh, checking that in my IELTS exam, the skimming and scanning, and it's very limited. It only works when you actually have a good idea of the text. Okay. Uh, skimming and scanning does not work when you do not have an idea of what the text is about. It's just that simple. Um, so Andre, yeah, you're right. So Andre is saying, uh, when we read the title, we should just start to ask what, why, how, and it's definitely these kind of slow and calm questions that will eventually give you a lot of clarity on the information. So the aesthetic merit of abstract art. Uh, so what is the aesthetic merit of abstract art? Now, first of all, of course, we might want to ask what is abstract art? And in this case, we're given this picture, uh, so that helps us, and we can come up with an answer. So uh, what is abstract art? What do you think? So according to this picture, um, what do you think is abstract art? What is that? Okay, it's definitely good to know vocabulary. It's good to know words like abstract, but if you're not 100% sure of what that means, you can still figure it out. Um, by just having clarity and, and using good logic. So what is abstract art? And Preeti, you're right. You can definitely visualize this as well, especially when the picture is given. So Andre says it's not real. Um, yeah, that's one way, Andre, to say it. it's not real. I mean, it is real because here is the painting. It's abstract art. It's real. 
So you can say it a little bit better, or you can state it a bit better than simply saying it's not real. Um, but I get what you're saying. Okay. Prashita, Saxena, Ois, Nico. What is abstract art? Okay, what is that? So that's what I would start with here. So if I were to ask um, myself, what is abstract art? Okay. And you want to master simplifying your thinking. Uh, so Prashita says it's art that doesn't necessarily represent something. Yeah, um, <clears throat> exactly. It is art that does uh, not have a clear uh, representation. But instead is up to interpretation. Or if we want to keep it simple and you can't think of the word interpretation, you can say opinion. Okay, uh, so we can all look at this uh, blue painting and for some people it will represent the sky, uh, for some people it will represent the ocean, uh, for some people it will represent looking at a blue sapphire, So, uh, which is a, let's say, a blue diamond. Uh, so it will represent different meanings uh, for different people, so it doesn't have clear meaning for the viewer. Okay. Um, the aesthetic merit of abstract art. Now, let's say that you don't know uh, what this actually means. Uh, what would you guess that it means? So if here you're completely confused about what it means, the aesthetic merit of abstract art, uh, you could take a guess, and I think that your guess could be very accurate and similar or synonymous with um, the authors. So what do you think this means, the aesthetic merit? of abstract art. Okay. Ali says it means like it's top level beauty. Okay. Keep it even simpler, Ali. There's an even easier way. Uh, yeah. So Prashita says maybe the quality. Sure. I think Prashita, that's nice. There's another way that I would, uh, simplify it, but I'm thinking of just one word as well, Prashita. So very good. Okay. Yeah, uh, Kashirsha, very good. So Kashirsha Ronan says the aesthetic value of abstract art. Yeah, um, or even simplify just to the value. Okay, so what is it worth? Aesthetic means beauty. And if you know that word, uh, fine. If you don't, it's okay. As long as you can kind of figure out the value of this abstract art, then your thinking is in the right way and you are one step closer to understanding the information and of course being able to answer uh, the questions uh, clearly. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, let's ask the next question. So, um, why does it matter? So why, why does the value of abstract art matter? That would be the next question. So we have the what kind of figured out. So what is it? What is abstract art? Um, why does it matter? So why does the value or artistic value of abstract art matter? So this is the next question I would ask here, okay? Um, Preeti says, because it's different? Sure. Why does it matter? Why, why do we even care about this? So why would an author at the IELTS uh, Cambridge uh, ESOL examination board who is making this exam, why would they come up with a topic like this and decide to write a, an essay on this? Okay. Uh, Vishnu says, maybe it's a type of creativity. Okay, good. Yeah, it's a type of creative expression, right? Sure. Okay. Uh, oh, it says because it expresses the ideas through colors. Yeah, or in different ways. So ideas and emotions, right? 
in different ways, sure. Okay. So why does it matter? Okay, Rajvir says that it enables the artist to use visualization and express their opinions. Yeah, so it gives a dynamic form of expression to artists. Yeah, uh, some simple ones as well. It's popular and often expensive, right? There are some very um, expensive forms of or expensive pieces of abstract art. Okay, sure. All right. Okay, and how does it work? So that would be, um, yeah, so Kashir just says some people don't understand it. That's the other one, okay? Um, sure, exactly, Kashir Shah. Yeah, people don't understand it. It's confusing for them. Okay, um, how does it work? And the answer there would be just something simple like uh, the author... Uh, splashes uh, some red color on canvas and states that it is an expression of anger. Okay, so the author just splashes some red colors and says, hey, that's a representation of anger. Okay, so this happens very quickly. Okay, here's another tip. And again, this is from my IELTS experience recently. I did this, it worked. Uh, I recommend doing the same. So practice this um, so that you can uh, predict and think critically very quickly in a, just one to two minutes, okay? So do the uh, visualization, critical thinking and predicting in one to two minutes. Okay, so speed is important, and this is where uh, practice will become very important as well. So um, speed is important here, okay? So you don't have much time for this. We take quite a bit of time because I want you to be trained in the class, but in the official exam, you're doing this fast. Okay, fast, very fast, all right? And again, don't worry about having 100% clarity at this point by any means. It's not important. Okay. All right. Um, so here is a question, uh, which is which paragraph contains the following information? Okay. And then uh, you have several questions here. This is very popular. I think I actually had two of these in my exam that I just did. And the way that it looked in the computer-based test, just so you're familiar with this, is they basically have like... Um, uh, kind of like a checkbox thing like this. Uh, let me see how many paragraphs we have here. So we have G. Okay, so in the computer-based exam, the way this question works is you have... like this, and then it'll say A, B, C, D, E, F, G, like that. And then for each of the questions, uh, what happens is there'll be a row of boxes for each question. Okay, I'm not going to line it up exactly, but it looks like this. So you'll have a statement here like the rejection of old rules of art. And if that turns out to be in paragraph C, then you click on C and it'll put a check mark there. And then eventually you'll end up with this kind of listed uh, check mark um, system. And you can only have one check mark per row. Okay? So you have to be very careful. And definitely I discovered that again, I mean, I knew this going into the exam, but uh, again, it reassured me doing the exam, the computer based exam last week, that this type of question you absolutely have to read the passage for it to get all of them correct. It's almost impossible uh, to uh, answer all of these correctly without reading the passage, okay? So that's what that question looks like. You have the question, and then you have this box, and you have to check off which paragraph it's in. Okay, now, um, again, what you need to do here, 
when you're getting ready is just read these questions. So it's definitely a good idea to read these questions before you read the passage. All of the information is somewhere in the passage. But again, don't worry about understanding every sentence clearly. So uh, just uh, read it, visualize it, paraphrase it if you can at the same time, okay, and, uh, and then move on. So the rejection of old rules of art, okay? So defying the conservative ways of art. Different kinds of aesthetic value. Various types of um, merit in beauty. Two competing arguments about the value of abstract art. Um, the debate about what abstract art is worth. Ambiguity itself provides part of the aesthetic experience. Does anybody know what the word ambiguity means? To be ambiguous? Yeah, Ois, even asking just what, why, how for the topic is a great start. I would ask it for the whole title, the whole concept, but yeah, it's a great start. Okay. Ambiguity. What's another way? Um, Vishnu says confusion. Confusion is a so-so synonym. It's not the most accurate. Okay. So ambiguity, think about art in the aesthetic experience. What is ambiguity? Um, Prashita says more than one meaning. Yeah. Um, Ali says undefined. Yeah. So ambiguity, another good way is to say uncertainty. Okay. So the antonym for ambiguous is certain. It's certain. So it's for sure that it's this way. It's certainty, uncertainty or ambiguity, unsure to be unsure. Okay. So, uh, uncertainty itself gives uh, part of the experience of beauty. Okay. So not being too sure about it. The mysterious nature of abstract art and aesthetic value is up to the viewer. So, uh, the beauty of, uh, or the worth of beauty is up to the subjective point of, uh, the person looking at it. Okay, good. Um, here we have some multiple choice. Now, um, here is a, a good, um, uh, part about the computer based practice exam. Has anybody taken the computer based test uh, among our members? Because you might know what I'm about to say. So, uh, for multiple choice, you only want to read the question. You do not want to read the responses. And if you do take the computer based version, that's actually really easy. Okay. Um, because the computer based test has a drop down menu. Okay, so you actually have to click on the question to see the choices, which is really nice because I think the IELTS examiners are actually trying to help students by not showing them the choices so they don't try to look at them before they read the passage. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So number 33, what makes abstract art different from classic art? A common critique of abstract art is that it lacks. So we're only reading the actual question. Okay. Why is it important to note that the aesthetic merit not solely be reserved for the sublime? Okay. All right. While realist works of art explicitly show their meaning, abstract works of art do what? Okay. All right. Fine. So Vishnu says, yes, I've done it. All right. So again, a tip for this, um, for the, uh, multiple choice. Okay. For computer based, but also it's true for the paper based. You just have to be a little bit more active in doing this. So the computer based, um, multiple choice questions is do not click on the question to see answers before you read the passage and try to answer on your own. Okay. 
So basically what I did, and I think it worked really well because the scores prove it. Um, so what I did is I just read this. You don't actually see the options because you have to click for this to appear. So you only see the question. So what I did is I just looked at the question. I read the passage. Then I read the question again. I thought about the answer. And then I clicked on it and then it gave me the options and then I made my choice. And that worked really, really well to get very high accuracy. Okay. Jainil, good. Jainil, did you do the computer-based exam? So Jainil saying, yes, I just completed the listening writing. Uh, true, false, not given. Okay. Uh, again, just ignore this. It's really easy to ignore this. As soon as you see a true, false, not given or a yes, no, not given type of question, uh, definitely do not pay attention to it. Just read. Okay. Jainil says paper-based. All right, Jainil, I hope it went really, really well. So uh, we ignore those. All right, let's do some reading. So this is basically it, okay? And this happens very quickly. So what I showed you right now, okay? Um, so this is kind of a secondary kind of uh, note, okay? Uh, the uh, critical thinking, visualization, predicting, uh, and question review should only take you maximum three minutes. Okay, it's fast. And again, if you don't understand everything, that's totally fine. Now, the reading is where you want to be careful and you want to read. Again, you don't have to understand every word and every idea. Just read. And very importantly, after each paragraph, think about what you just read. Okay. So, and you don't have to have a perfect answer for that either. Okay. So here we go. This is reading everyone. Uh, so read with me. Okay. Here we go. Um, a. Abstract art is notorious for its apparent lack of artistic skill meaning and value while its harshest critics believe that abstract art is not art at all uh, many art connoisseurs feel that abstract is an aesthetically pleasing expression of the human condition this article will discuss both sides of the issue and present arguments for and against the aesthetic merit of abstract art Okay, so uh, what is this paragraph about? What did I just read? So what is this about? What is this uh, five-line introduction telling you, the reader? Okay, so Ali says it's the intro, it's the thesis. And Ali, what is the intro? What is the thesis? What is it telling you about abstract art? Okay. So what is it saying? So here, hopefully many of you got the idea that the intro says that uh, many believe abstract art is not art at all and others feel it expresses emotions well, okay? So hopefully you got that much. Yeah, oh, it's very good. So it says there's two kind of different arguments about abstract art. Very good, yeah. So you need to get that much, okay? Otherwise, the reading is just going to be a blur. This is a very, very important step, students. You have to just really quickly think about what is this paragraph about, okay? All right, um, let's keep going. Abstract art by definition does not follow the rules of reality. Until the late 19th century, artists had more or less stuck to the notion of art as representation of reality. Artists such as Gainsborough or Rembrandt uh, followed the rules of reality with regards to light, perspective, physics, and logic. Abstract artists like Jackson Pollock rejected these supposed rules of painting. Instead, Pollock made his own rules or rejected rules entirely. 
The aesthetic value of works such as Pollux, that is to say the ability for works like his to elicit pleasure when viewed, is the point at stake in this discussion. Okay, uh, what is this paragraph about? How would, you, how would you summarize this? So again, this is very important practice at home. So body one, how would you summarize that paragraph? As much as you understood there, okay? Caroline, about bringing something of different argument, is that for the previous maybe? Um, Preeti says it's giving two opinions. Um, yeah, maybe. Okay. Yeah, okay, Prashita says abstract art before the 19th century and after. Uh, there was no abstract art before the 19th century, really, Prashita, or not that we really know of. Kashirsha says classic and abstract artists. Okay, um, so... So I would say rules of art and the emergence of abstract art, okay? All right, uh, that's how I would coin it. Rules of art and the emergence of abstract art, okay? So the better that you can do this, the more concise, the faster that you were, will answer the questions, okay? All right, let's keep going. So on one hand, some critics feel that abstract art is facile, silly, and indulgent. It is on their account a perfect example of the kind of art snobbery that the outside world finds so distasteful. Looking at a canvas covered in blue paint, we are meant to see something, perhaps jealousy, perhaps the depth of human emotion, perhaps the bleakness of the human condition. But for many people, they merely see a blue rectangle. It is not mere lack of imagination, however, that gives viewers the impression that the artwork lacks aesthetic merit. Many critics who have a keen eye for good art feel that many works of abstract art lack aesthetic merit. A common argument against these artworks is that, the lack, that they lack skill. Artworks by Rembrandt and Gainsborough are unambiguously works of profound skill. These artists committed their lifetimes to their craft, and it shows in the virtuosity of their works. Okay, um, what is this paragraph about? Okay, so what is this one about? What is C about? Hopefully you come up with the same answer as I will write up. Okay. Okay. Yeah, oh, it's very good. So always says it's the critic's position of on abstract art. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Janiel, good luck on your speaking interview. All right. Okay, so it's definitely a criticism. This whole paragraph is talking about the fact that, hey, abstract art is not all that valuable. Um, it doesn't necessarily require skill, and it's just kind of make-believe. Okay, um, let's keep going. So here we go, a little bit faster now. Um, it is important to note, however, that aesthetic merit must not be solely reserved for the sublime. In comparing Rembrandt to an abstract artist such as Pollock, one must realize there are many kinds of aesthetic merit. For example, there's the aesthetic merit in a sunset, in a beautiful sculpture, in a symphony, or even in a well-composed meal. So if aesthetic merit is represented in many fold ways, is it possible that abstract art satisfies at least one of those criteria? Many critics say yes. So this is the pro side that argues for the value of abstract art, saying that there are many types of beauty, okay, including food and uh, music. 
So good. And I remember one of the questions was something about reserved for the sublime, but I'm not going to search for that right now. I will just keep it in mind that it's somewhere in the middle in paragraph D. All right. Um, the value of abstract art lies for some critics in its mystery. Whereas realist artworks simply show and tell their meaning, the meaning of abstract works is hidden behind a veil of ambiguity. Perhaps the artist has an intended meaning. Perhaps the artist does not. Additionally, the meaning for one person may be different than the meaning for another person. The key is that the painting does have meaning, but is meaning the same as aesthetic merit? Arguably not. Words have meanings, for example, but lack aesthetic merit. However, one might say for a painting or other artwork to have meaning is precisely for it to have aesthetic merit. Okay, what is this about? It's about the mystery of abstract art and how the mystery of abstract art is part of its beauty or part of its appeal. Okay, so stay with me here, members, as I'm going through these paragraphs and answering. This is exactly what you're doing, and try not to just listen to me, but try to also read with me, okay? All right. Um, perhaps the real answer to the debate is that whether an object has aesthetic merit or not is up to the viewer. An object can have aesthetic merit for one person, but lack it for another person. So in this sense, abstract art is neither meritorious nor the opposite. Instead, it is whatever the viewer thinks it is. On this account, if a person finds an abstract work of art aesthetically pleasing, then the artwork is aesthetically pleasing for him or her. If not, then it's not. What is this paragraph about? Well, it's about the fact that in the end, abstract art, the value is up to the person looking at the art. Okay, all right, Preeti says comparisons and merit. So most of the paragraphs after the second body paragraph focus on the positive side and I'm keeping that in mind. So introduction shows the debate, body one shows the uh, argument against or sh so, sorry, shows the history, the emergence of abstract art. Then C shows an argument against, and D, E, F tend to explain the positives. Okay, uh, let's go with G. So this answer, however, will not satisfy some readers who desire a clear answer to the debate in question. For such readers, it is important to point out that ambiguity is inherent in all art. In fact, ambiguity is part of the aesthetic experience itself. So the fact that there is no clear answer forthcoming to the aesthetic merit of abstract art is not surprising. It is the nature of art to lack crystal clarity in order to invite interpretation and meditation, which are critical parts of the very aesthetic experience in question. So conclusion says, well, maybe it's not a perfect answer, but having ambiguity or uncertainty in art is part of its magic. It's part of its uh, beauty. Okay, good. So now I have lots more clarity. Uh, let's go back to the questions. And now we should be able to answer these quite nice and fast, okay? So at this point, we've spent about 12 minutes on reading the passage, the visualization, okay? And we go to question 27, the rejection of old rules of art. Okay, that was really clear in my mind. Which paragraph is that? I can go back and identify to make sure, um, but again, that's very, very clear for me. Okay, so the rejections of the old um, uh, rules of art, so 27. What was that? Which, uh, which paragraph contained uh, that response? Kashirsha says B. Yeah, so remember Jackson Pollock? Okay, I can go back here and it's quite clear. Okay, 
Um, it says here that we had the traditional rules of art that were followed by Rembrandt, and then abstract art emerged in the late um, 19th, early uh, 20th century. Uh, Pollock rejected these supposed rules. So uh, B, okay? Now, again, only answer these after you've read the passage because you don't know if there's another paragraph that has better information on it. So here you put in B or in the computer-based exam you would put a check mark into the box that shows B and then that's it. All right, 28, different kinds of aesthetic value. So different types of aesthetic value. Uh, I think that was a fairly easy one as well. I remember um, reading that. I know where it was roughly. So if I have to reference, I can kind of know whether it was in the beginning, the middle, or closer to the end. And I remember it was um, different kinds. So it was like the sunset, a uh, statue, um, even a well-prepared meal uh, can be aesthetically valu valuable. Okay. Kashirsha says somewhere in the middle or somewhere near the end, the food one. Yeah, and I, and I do remember it, it was middle to the end. Okay. All right. So let's look for that food. I remember the food was somewhere here. Okay, here we go. Um, so it is important to note, however, um, that it's not solely reserved for the sublime. Okay, so... Um, for example, there's the aesthetic merit in a sunset, sculpture, symphony, okay? So D. Okay. Twenty-nine, two competing arguments about the value of abstract art. Okay, this one's fairly easy. I think uh, just by conceptualizing this, we can get this one. So I would let, yeah, oh, it's very good. Yeah, uh, absolutely. This is the introduction, right? The introduction says that, hey, one side says it's not art. The other side says it's perfectly good art. It expresses emotion. So um, A, okay. All right, um, 30. Ambiguity itself provides part of the aesthetic experience, okay? Uh, which paragraph most clearly emphasizes that, hey, not knowing um, what art actually means uh, creates part of that ex aesthetic experience. Now, I remember that the author used the word ambiguity a few times, but there was another word the author used uh, in one of the paragraphs that really made it clear. Uh, what was that word before I look at paragraph G? Anybody remember what that word was that the author used instead of the word ambiguity? So what was it? Instead of ambiguity, what was the, the author using? He says, this is part of the beauty of art and used a different word instead of ambiguity or this. Very good, Ois. Yeah, it was mystery. Mystery. Fantastic. Yeah. The mystery, right? So if I remember the word mystery and ambiguity, then I can look for it, right? So uh, I'm not just skimming and scamming aimlessly, but I'm carefully uh, looking for it. Okay. And here we have the value of abstract art lies for some critics in its mystery. Whereas realist artworks simply show and tell their meaning, the meaning of abstract works is hidden behind a veil of ambiguity. So E uh, would be the correct answer here, okay? And again, this is where comprehension comes in. It's very important. If you're just looking for ambiguity, it's going to be much, much more difficult to find the correct answer here. So E, okay? All right. Um, the mysterious nature of abstract art. Okay. So which paragraph deals with the mysterious nature 
of abstract art. Is it the same one? Is it this one here, E? Or is it a different one? Well, it might be close to E. Uh, let's take a look at G and let's compare them, okay? So this is where you can take a little bit more time, okay? Uh, so this is the conclusion. Well, let's take a look at F first, okay? So perhaps the real answer to the, the, the debate is that whether an object has aesthetic merit or not is up to the viewer. An object can have aesthetic merit for one person but lack it for another person. So in this sense, abstract art is neither meritorious nor the opposite. Instead, it is whatever the viewer thinks it is. On this account, if a person finds an abstract work of art aesthetically pleasing, then that artwork is aesthetically pleasing for him or her. If not, then not. Um, that looks like it could be right. It looks like it could be the mysterious uh, part, right? So it's up to the viewer whether or not it's valuable, okay? So maybe F, okay, at this point. Um, let's see if it could be G. This answer, however, will not satisfy some readers who desire a clear answer to the debate in question. For such readers, it is important to point out that the ambiguity is inherent in all uh, art. In fact, ambiguity is part of the aesthetic experience. So it's part of the aesthetic experience itself. So the fact that there's no clear answer forthcoming to the aesthetic. Okay, so that looks like a really good answer. So F looks okay. And G looks okay as well. All right, um, and then 32. So the aesthetic value is up to the viewer. Well, because I just reread both of these, I think that um, this is definitely F, okay? And in this case, and this actually happened to me in my exam as well, so what I ended up doing is because I realized that F is definitely the best answer for this one, and it looked like F and G are both okay for this one, I actually uh, left G for that one and ended up with this sequence, okay? And then you can have a lot more certainty. So at times what will happen is there will be a couple of paragraphs that will fit for two of the responses. In that case, don't panic, go till the end, and then figure out which one one is better suited for and choose the other one for the one that wasn't it. Does that make sense? I did that and I'm pretty sure it worked. I don't wanna spoil the marks yet because we wanna wait for that video to come out, but I'm certain that worked. Um, so is everybody clear on what I just did there? So it looked like for these last questions, there were a few answers that would be correct. So I didn't have a concrete decision for each of these until I finished at the very end. So that's very important, okay? Um, Ois is asking, usually can you repeat the same letters in the same paragraph? Uh, yes, but you can only have one choice for each, okay? So you could have GG, but um, you see it says up here, OS, you may use any letter more than once. Um, so yes, you can. <laughs> you can have a repeat. But um, there's a very good chance like these aren't the same ideas. So it's going to be different. So um, you have to be really, really careful and pay attention. Okay. Uh, so it's a good idea to go until the end and then make an adjustment or two where you were a little bit unsure beforehand, okay? Um, it will become clear at the very end for these last ones, okay? All right, um, so let's keep going with the multiple choice. All right, so that's an important tip. Go until the very end and then you can make a couple adjustments on ones where you're not sure. Okay, um, here we go. So multiple choice, uh, what makes abstract art different from classic art, okay? So you have to find your own answer here, okay? Uh, 
uh, it lacks clear meaning. It doesn't follow uh, rules of uh, reality. Okay, so these are my answers here. And then I'm going to see if any of these match. So it's made after the late 19th century. No, nope. it does not follow classical art rules. So it doesn't follow rules of reality. That was classical art rules, okay? It follows a pattern of logic. No, nope. it elicits pleasure from the viewer. So which one of these is the closest match to my answer? Prashita says B. Yeah, absolutely. So it does not follow uh, classical art rules, right? It doesn't follow rules of reality. So the best answer here is definitely B. Abstract art is different from classical art if that doesn't follow these classical art rules. Um, classical art can also elicit pleasure. So if you see a beautiful painting of a man hugging a woman, um, you'll definitely get some emotional feelings, and that could be classical art. So use your logic as well, okay? Okay, a common critique of abstract art is that it lacks skill, right? So I remember the one paragraph, it basically says that you don't need to be skillful for abstract art. Imagination, oh, I have a perfect match. So I choose D and I move on, okay? Um, Ois, for this one, D, again, so D is not possible here, as I just explained. Both classical and abstract art can elicit pleasure from the viewer, okay? So careful. Why is it important to note that aesthetic merit not be solely reserved for the sublime? Um, well, because there's pleasure in a lot of different things, like sunsets and food and so on. Uh, there's more than one kind of aesthetic merit. That seems to match. Aesthetic merit is reserved for experts. There is aesthetic merit in a sunset. Abstract art may have additional meanings. Um, the best answer here is A, right? It's not C. C is just one type of aesthetic merit. There's more than one kind of aesthetic merit. Some people can say, well, what a beautiful sunset or... Oh, what a beautiful dog, what a beautiful statue, what a beautiful flower, right? So A is the best answer. So use your logic as well, okay? IELTS doesn't lie. It's not going to give you information that's not true. Okay, 36. Uh, while realist works of art explicitly show their meanings, Abstract works of art do what? Uh, they hide their meanings, so it's unclear, it's ambiguous. Um, tell their meaning, hide the meaning from the artist, well, maybe not from the artist. Uh, disambiguate the meaning, obscure the meaning. Okay, which one of these do you think is correct? You do have to know a little bit of um, vocabulary here. Uh, they do definitely don't tell their meaning, so I know it can't be this one. They don't hide their meaning from the artist, because if you're the artist, you know what you're painting, or you have an idea, hopefully. Disambiguate. Ambiguate means to make uncertain, so un uncertain means to make clear. So that probably means that this is not right, so obscure. Okay, Obscure is another way to say hide hide their meaning. So D is correct. Okay, good. So um, I'm going to stop there for today. I'm not going to rush through the true, false, not given. Uh, you can try these on your own, these true, false, not given questions. They will be at the end of the video. Of course, uh, for those of you who have access to our premium package, you can find the answers um, in your books at ahelp.com. Uh, GLTshelp.com, not so much because that's for general IELTS, but also if you send me an email with your answers, I can send you back uh, the answer key, okay? So those are the steps necessary to get a great mark on your uh, reading section. Um, the trick is to practice these strategies so you can be proficient, you can use them quickly, stay confident, 
don't worry about understanding every word. Just make sure that you focus on using good strategy, good logic, and interpreting the information. Okay, so interpret that information. All right, everyone. Um, coming up in about 35 minutes, I will host another class for listening strategy and practice. Okay, so listening strategy and practice. Uh, come back for that. All right. And uh, have a nice break. And again, I will be back in half an hour. Uh, remember, um, you can get our academic IELTS uh, products and full course. We help thousands of students every day um, for academicaehelp.com. Uh, and for general IELTS, it's gieltshelp.com. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. So definitely worth a few dollars. You get apps, you get practice exams, videos, and much, much more. We are world leaders when it comes to IELTS exam preparation. See you in 30 minutes. I'm Adrian signing out from Budapest for now. You're welcome, Rashika. You're welcome, Owis. Bye.